Well, good morning, everyone, and isn't it great to be back in the house of the Lord? You know, we all go through very busy weeks, but it's great just to uh, come into the sanctity of the, of the Sabbath day into the harbour here, and it's, it, it's just so great. Um, again, we'd like to, to welcome you all here, and there's a few visitors here, and it's good to see our friends back. You're from Auckland, I, I believe. Those two back behind Lewis. Yeah, great. And also, there's some people we, we kind of forget, and a chap that's been coming for quite some time here who kind of just sits in the background and keeps our young ladies under control is Ben. So I'd like to officially welcome Ben to our, our service this morning. A little uh, note of thanks, too. You know, there's, we belong to a fantastic church here in Wangarei. We really do. God's blessed it. And um, we've got people who do a, a job always behind the scenes, and they don't always get acknowledged. But I'd just like to say thank you to, to Marion this morning because she's up here playing the organ. She's organising other musicians when there's something on. So thank you. Thank you, Marion. Of course, there's lots of other people I could thanks, say thank you to, but uh, that's coming. Please remember, too, in your prayers, the people that are in Bible studies. Carmen, uh, as, as Grant mentioned this morning, she's under, under heavily heavy attacks from, uh, from uh, the other side. And uh, please remember Shane also, he's, he's doing well in his studies. And even young Brian, he's uh, doing well in his studies, but he also um, is under attack uh, some of the time. And even our young people, you know, they, they don't get the time that they need to spend in study. So please, please remember them. The other thing that I'd like you to really soak up and enjoy is the last days, weeks, and months of purple carpet and purple curtains, and, and blue carpet too. These are going to be a thing of the past come end of January. Uh, we would have had it a bit sooner, but because of the quantity that's required for the whole church building, they've had to make a special run for us. So our carpet will be ready uh, for end of January, and, and our curtains also. So uh, a new start, a new start for the new year, a new pastor and a new carpet. So. He doesn't have to do anything. It's all been done. He's just got to get out there and do some work. So we'll make sure he gets out there and does the work, okay? Right, I think I've, I've covered everything this morning. Yeah, good. Let's just bow again, and I'll just ask the Holy Spirit to be with us. Dearest Heavenly Father, we're just so thankful, Lord, for your love. We're so thankful, Lord, that we can meet here today. Father, you are gracious to us every second of the day, Lord, and it is amazing how much you show your love through us by helping us to overcome hurdles, Lord, and... Uh, just help us to get through the days. And for this, we thank you. We pray that your word uh, this morning will be glorified by your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> Mary Ann and I had the pleasure of uh, attending the Spirit-led Summit hosted at Turi uh, Ridge Park by the North New Zealand Conference. And uh, we here in Wangarei can really praise God for the spirit-led men that are running or leading our conference. During the conference, we had little workshops, and it was great to see men like uh, Pastor, Pastor Gallagher and pa our president, Tupai, running these workshops and just seeing in which direction they're, they're taking our church. The vision that they are holding now and for the new year is healthy churches. It is also a topic that will be explained at Big Camp, and every church is in courage to adopt the vision, healthy churches. Of course, this does not mean that we are to wait for every member to convert to vegetarianism. No. But however, the uh, nutri nutrition is still the right hand or the right arm of the message. Healthy churches just do not refer to physical food, but a wholesome look into the church as a whole. Creation health is a life style transformation program designed to help people live life to the fullest by focusing on the eight universal principles of whole health, whole health God originally gave at creation. Imagine if in every New Zealand community there was a Holy Spirit filled church sharing the good news of Jesus Christ. Every Adventist Holy Spirit filled church. Wouldn't that be wonderful? Amen. Recently, or should I say about six weeks ago, uh, one of our members approached me and asked me when I was going to talk on the particular topic of the latter rain, and I thanked them for the prod. However, since then, I've been pondering this suggestion, and um, a lot of thoughts have gone through my mind, and I thought, yeah, that's, that's a great topic, 
and I kind of parked it in God's um, uh, request area, and he's just so fantastic the way he, uh, he leads us. And I'll give you an example. It was not our intention for Mary and I to, to attend the Spirit-led summit at Tiri Ridge, what with our workload and, and responsibility. However, we were invited specially to attend, and I'm very thankful that we were kind of pushed and had that invitation too, because it was really inspiring. The summit was very personal and uh, inspiring for the work that has taken place within our churches. And when I reflect how God leads and guides, especially in my uh, ministerial capacity today, uh, I'm just blown away and really humbled uh, and marvel at how gracious he, he is towards me. But not only me, but to those who I'm in contact with. It's a, it's a great joy, you know, to, to study with a person and to see before your own eyes that particular person accept truths that we've been uh, presenting for so long and uh, not only accept them, but acknowledge them and, and put them into practice in their own, own lives. Um, and I think that joy should not only be mine alone, but it also should be yours, you know. And that's part of our emp empowering program is to, to get you to, to also experience that joy by getting out there and doing Bible studies. Remember at the beginning of the year, we had our empowering um, program here, our, our little talk regarding that. We had 31 people wanting to have Bible instructions. Well, we've only got less than 10% of those people participating. So what's happened? What's happened? And um, it's, it's, it's time for us to really get ignited and, uh, and get out there and tell the world uh, what we believe as a church because there is no other better message than what we've got to present to the world. If we go over to the book of Jude, chapter 1, verse 17, and uh, I'll just give you a chance to get there in your Bibles. <clears throat> Jude, chapter 1, verse 17, it says, But my dear friends, and I'm reading from the actual New, new uh, International Version here, it says, But dear friends, remember what the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ foretold. They said to you, in the last times there will be scoffers who will follow their own ungodly desires. These are the people who divide you, who follow mere natural instincts and do not have the spirit. You know, these people don't have to come from outside, they can be also inside the church too. These are the people who divide you, who follow mere natural instincts and do not have the spirit. But you, dear friends, by building yourselves up in your most holy faith and praying in the Holy Spirit. Again, but you, dear friends, by building yourselves up in your most holy faith and praying in the Holy Spirit. Holy faith, that's what we have, and praying in the Holy Spirit. Keeping yourself, <coughs> excuse me, in God's love as you wait for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ to bring you to eternal life. Keep yourself in God's love. Be merciful to those who doubt. Be merciful to those who don't have that same um, love that we have for the message. Scoffers, yeah, there will be scoffers always, and there'll be a lot more as we come closer to the end, saying, where is he? Why delayeth he his coming? Laodicean church, you know, that's been a word that's been around for a long time, Laodicean church, and we might think, oh, well, why bother? You know, we're Laodicea, and now nah, we're not going to get out of this, this rut we're in, but we can, and we can start by doing it here in Wangarei by becoming a spirit-filled church. Latter rain. I thought, yeah, let's, let's talk about the latter rain. And I went into um, the writings of Mrs. White, The Spirit of Prophecy, and in her book, Maranatha, chapter 211, I found out uh, this citation here, the early and the latter rain. It says, uh, and she also takes the verse from the book of Joel, chapter 2, 23. And it says there, Be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God. For he hath given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain and the latter rain in the first month. And of course we know that when uh, we're out there harvesting and planting that when we're always happy to see the, the first spring rains come. To get the to get the um, the plants off to a good start, 
And of course, the latter rain is great to help yield a good uh, harvest and a good crop. And she goes on to say, there is to be in the churches a wonderful manifestation of the power of God. Isn't that wonderful? A wonderful manifestation of the power of God. But, she says, it will not move upon those who have not humbled themselves before the Lord. So there's a condition in there. And opened the door of their heart by confession and repentance. Didn't we all do that? Didn't we do that at our baptism? Don't we do that on a daily basis? In the manifestation of the power which lightens the earth with the glory of God, they will see only something which in their blindness they think dangerous. Now, I'll just back up a bit here. When Mrs. White is talking about the church being filled with the Holy Spirit, we're not talking about Neo-Pentecostalism. We're not talking about a celebration church. We're talking about an end-time church that needs the Holy Spirit in order to bring the work to an end. Something which will arouse the affairs... Oh, sorry, I'll back up there. In the manifestation of that power which lightens the earth with the glory of God, they will see only something which in their blindness they think dangerous, something which will arouse their fears and they will brace themselves to resist it. Because the Lord does not work according to their expectations and ideal, they will oppose the work. Why? Why, they say, should we not know the Spirit of God when we have been in the work so many years? Because they did not respond to the warnings, the entreaties, of the messages of God, but persistently said, I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing. Maranatha 219 verse 1. She then goes on to say, Talent, long experience, will not make men channels of light unless they place themselves under the bright beams of the sun of righteousness and are called and chosen and, and are prepared by the endowment of the Holy Spirit. When men who handle sacred things will humble themselves under the mighty hand of God, the Lord will lift them up. He will make them men of discernment, men rich in the grace of his Holy Spirit. Their strong, selfish straight traits sorry, of character and their stubbornness will be seen in the light shining from the light of the world. I will come unto thee quickly and will re remove thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. If you seek the Lord with all your heart, he will be found of you. There must be no ne neglect of the grace represented by the former reign. Only those who are living up to the light that they have received will receive greater light. Unless we are daily advancing in the exemplification of the active Christian virtues, we shall not recognize the manifestation of the Holy Spirit in the latter reign. It may be falling on hearts all around us, but we shall not discern or receive it. How sad is that? That was in Maranatha chapter 219 verse 3. The former rain has fallen and for some it's dried right up out of the lives on some whom it fell but not all. There must not be no neglect of the grace represented by the former rain. Only those who are living up to the light, they will receive greater light. Unless we are daily advancing in the exemplification of the active Christian virtues, we shall not recognize the manifestations of the Holy Spirit in the latter rain. That is a very sad statement, isn't it? To think it may be falling on hearts all around us, but we shall not discern or receive it. The latter rain has started to fall and uh, we can see it becoming active also within the churches and with people that we come in contact with. Reading from the book of Romans, chapter 13. Romans chapter 13, reading from verse 11 and 12. And that knowing... And that knowing the time, that now is, it is high time to awake out of our sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armour of light. She goes on to say here in uh, chapter 219 of Maranatha, 
She says, the great controversy is nearing its end. Every report of calamity by sea or land is a testimony to the fact that the end of all things is at hand. Jan touched on a bit of that last week in his sermon. We do see that, uh, what's happening in the, in the seas around us and the earth. Wars and rumors of wars declare it. If there, if, is there a Christian whose pulse does not beat quickened quickly by this action that is on, um, around us as he in, anticipates the great events opening before us? The Lord is coming. We hear the footsteps of an approaching God. Amen. This knowledge of the nearness of Christ's coming should not be allowed to lose its force. And we become careless and inattentive and fall into slumber, into an insensibility and indifference to reality. In slumber, we are in an unreal world and not sensible of the things which are taking place around us. There are those who have the blazing light of truth shining all around them and yet are insensible to it. They are enchanted by the enemy, held under a spell by his bewitching power. They are not preparing for their great day which is soon to come to our world. They seem utterly insensible to religious truth. Are there not some youth who are awake? Those who see the night cometh and also the morning should work with untiring energy to arouse their sleeping associates. Can they not feel their peril, pray for them and show them by their own life and character that they believe themselves that Christ is soon to come. The rapidly diminishing space of time between us and eternity should more deeply impress us. Every day that passes makes one left, one less left uh, to us to complete our work at, perfect, at perfecting our character. As long as there are many asleep, many sporting away the precious hours in careless indifference, as it were, upon the very brink of the eternal world. Those who do not believe must be sober, must be awake, must be earnest and diligent and watch unto prayer. Is there any young people amongst us who are awake? You know, it's the young people that are going to take this message to the end, isn't it? And um, when you think on uh, Watch 3ABN and you see the Ignite programs of all these young people who are so excited about bringing this gospel truth to an end. And it's great that we have young people too, like Nelson and his family, who are leading a, minis- uh, a music missionary uh, mission in our church. You know, they were up at the Miravale uh, Old People's Home last last uh, last Sabbath afternoon, and uh, the people absolutely loved it. So you know, we can work in all areas, and even our our clothing program to see the results that that's having. Community. You'll remember once when I had that particular word up on the board. Community. If we divide that word in two, the first three letters is to come, to come in unity. We put the E on the end of uh, the C-O-M because that means everybody is to come in unity. Let's turn to the book of Acts, chapter 2, verse 1. And here we are, have the report of the day of Pentecost. And when we read it here, it says, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. In one place and in one accord. They were all in unity. Verse 4, And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. How many were filled with the Holy Spirit? Was it just Peter? John? Maybe three or four? No, all were filled with the Holy, uh, Holy Spirit. All were filled with the Holy Spirit, and that's great news. And this is us today. Let's all become filled with the Holy Spirit. The former rain fell, and the Spirit filled them all. They began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Brothers and sisters, when we receive the latter rain, the tongue that we speak in is the tongue of truth correcting and reproving all the lies and falsehoods that are out there, that are professed today. Reading from verse 5, And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. 
Now, when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one unto another, Behold, are not all of these which speak Galileans? And how hear we every man in our own tongue, wherein we were born? Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, and the dwellers of Mesopotamia, and Judea, Cappadocia, and Pontus, and Asia. Phythegra and Pamphylia, Egypt, in Egypt and the parts of Libya around Serene, and strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes, Cretes and Arabians, we do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God. And they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, What meaneth this? Others mocking said, These men are full of new wine. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, You men of Judea and all you that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known to you and hearken to my words, for these men are not drunk. We go down to verse um, 21. And it says here, uh, sorry, in verse 16 I'm, I'm reading, uh, Peter goes on to say, but this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And he goes to recite uh, what Joel said to them. He says, and it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaidens I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in heavens above and signs in the earth beneath, flood and fire and vapour of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and notable day of the Lord cometh. And it shall come to pass that so ever who shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This was Joel giving this prophecy way before Jesus ever was upon, upon the earth. And, you know, we heard too last week how, you know, things are, are happening around the world, how Obama and the Pope have, become, have come together and had a meeting. We've hear, we hear of other things that are happening. And that's fine. That's great. It's going to happen anyway, right? But the thing is that we have to be ready. We have to be filled with the Holy Spirit so that we have the strength to go through these periods of time just before Jesus comes. In our book, um, what Seventh Day Adventists Believe. Uh, it's titled uh, in chapter 17, Spiritual Gifts and Ministries. And it goes on to say here, God bestows upon all members of his church in every age spiritual gifts. So that's everyone receives spiritual gifts. With each member, which each member, sorry, is to employ in loving ministry for the common good of the church and of humanity given by the agency of the Holy Spirit, who apportions to each member as he wills. The gifts provide all abilities and ministries needed by the church to fulfill its divinely ordained functions. According to the scriptures, these gifts include such ministries as faith, healing, prophecy, proclamation, teaching, administration, reconciliation, compassion, and self-sacrifice and service, and charity for the help, encouragement, of people. Some members are called of God and endowed by the Spirit for functions recognized by the church in pastoral, evangelistic, apost apostolic, and teaching ministries, particularly needed to equip the members for service, to build up the church to spiritual maturity. That is our job, to build this church up to spiritual maturity. Because if Jesus is coming, we need to be there to foster unity of the faith and knowledge of God. When members employ these spiritual gifts as faithful stewards of God's varied grace, the church is protected from the destructive influence of false doctrine, grows with a growth that is from God and is built up in faith and love. The devil is out there. He's trying to destroy every facet of our church with groups, side groups, and he takes members away. But... Uh, we are filled, to be filled with the Holy Spirit so we recognize and can help these people come back on track. In the book of Corinthians, it goes on to say, in 1 Corinthians 12, it talks about the gifts of the Spirit. But uh, I'll just come back there again. Remember that the Holy Spirit gives the gift according as he wills, right? It doesn't mean that anyone misses out. But how do we know if we've got a spiritual gift? How do we know? 
we've got to step out um, and start practicing a talent or a, that we have and God will enhance it with a spiritual gift. In the book of uh, Corinthians again, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1, It goes on to say here, Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. In other words, brothers and sisters, he does not want us to have no knowledge of what spiritual gifts are about. And for some of us, we've kind of put it over there, thinking that if God gives me a gift, I'm going to have to do something about it. Well, praise the Lord if he does, because he wants you to help bring this work to an end. Everybody will receive spiritual gifts. So he doesn't want us to be ignorant in that area. Sorry, I've lost my page here. Must have left that one behind. doesn't matter. So here we have it, our spiritual gifts. And it goes on to say what the gifts are here, as I mentioned in our uh, what um, seven-day Adventists believe. So we all are going to receive spiritual gifts and we all have them. And it's amazing to see that when someone is baptised into the church, how their gift slowly develops. Sometimes it develops even beforehand because when we receive the Holy Spirit, we are baptised. Remember also too um, oh, what Jesus said to us uh, in John, the book of John verse uh, 20, verse 21. It goes on to say, again, Jesus said, Peace be with you, as the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive you the Holy Spirit. I'll repeat that again. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive ye the Holy Spirit. Paul said, I die daily. So if he died daily, he, re he required, again, the baptism of the Holy Spirit on a daily basis. We are the same, aren't we? So what we need is to be that close to Jesus that he can breathe on us so that we too receive the Holy Spirit. The work is not yet finished. We've got a long way to go. So please pray on a daily basis for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit in your lives and in the lives of our church members. Amen. Dearest Heavenly Father, we're just so thankful that you too will plant us, our feet, on higher ground too, Lord. And we just pray that you'll get keep each and every one of us ready for that great and wonderful day. Lord, we pray for an outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon this church and upon the churches throughout New Zealand so that we can hasten this work to come to an end. Prepare us, Lord, for what is about to come upon the earth, but prepare us, Lord, in a local and individual manner within our families and within our workplaces. And for this, we ask you and thank you in Jesus' name.